Let's start with a basic form. You know how to make this in Bristol. It's got holes here because um, it's easy to hang something in cardboard. It doesn't have a top or a bottom. Let's just figure out this first. And this was for a connection, to connect another form in there. So it's really simple and similar. Usually with the cardboard, there's a weird rough edge here. So we wanna get rid of that. And then usually the corner's a little damaged. Instead of putting our ruler down here like we did with Bristol, we're gonna put it up on the cardboard. And then you can just feel your way across and make sure you're flush with the edge. And then you can use the triangle. against the ruler and I'm just drawing a line here to show me what I'm going to cut off. This is not going to be part of the design. And let's go for three inches. <laughs> just like that one. So this is where it begins and every three inches I can draw a line. I'm just trying to keep my ruler real steady at the bottom, nice and flush, so my measurements are correct. Great thing about cardboard is that because, um, well, because your design's gonna be larger, if you're a sixteenth of an inch off, it's not as critical as it was with the Bristol. We gotta get this to fold. It's very flat. So we can use the bone folder or the knife, and it really depends, depends on a couple of things, because you've got the bacon, I call, <laughs> this corrugated area inside. One edge is not so pretty, and one edge is kind of interesting. This is the stronger edge. So when we build a form, and we've got the hills and valleys of the bacon, right where we need to cut. This is gonna be one of those forms where you hide you hide the edges. So we could just use the bone folder to break the top surface and kind of smush, smush that bacon. If we use a knife, well, you're actually, you'd be fine with the hills and valleys. You just gotta be careful and you have to go slower with a knife. <laughs> Still folds just fine. You can go a little faster. And the great thing about using this tool is that it compresses the paper as well. Hmm. See how it's not square? It really it would be square if I could just tuck this in a little bit. The problem is the thickness of the cardboard. So we have to compensate for that. We have to do something about that because our lid will not fit unless we deal with this, this issue here. <laughs> if I could just get it in here, then it would, yeah, it would fit better. We'll see. So you need to remove some of the cardboard. I'm just gonna cut this loose so that I have more room to work. I'm using the cutting mat. I need to go through one more. It's stuck somewhere in one little spot. There we go. Just want to make a little more room for myself here. And then I need to like just let this be the bottom. But what about over here? I can um, get my triangle here on the pencil line. Or I can use my ruler. So we could put a top on this. So the top would be three by three. Let's try and get up to 14 here. So somewhere in here we'll have a lid. And then one, two, three, count three inches down. And this will be the top of the form. If you feel like you need to draw this in, go for it. So you remember what you're supposed to cut and what you're not supposed to cut. Just like that. 
And that's our top. We won't worry about a bottom, just to, just to save time. So again, we're gonna cut against a ruler. And I think the cutting's a little easier. Even though the material is thicker, it's a pretty soft material. You don't need to pull, you don't need to pull the blade out too far. <laughs> the longer the blade, the, the deeper they cut if you have an accident. So you need enough to cut through the cardboard. this edge off. What's missing? Tabs. There are no tabs. So I'm using a ruler for every cut. tabs you ask <laughs> I heard that question I heard you and try not to pull if it's still stuck just let's go back here and usually it's just a tiny little cut you need to make in the corner no tabs because we're gonna do something different we have to deal with the thickness of the cardboard now before, the bristle was so thin, we had nothing to worry about. So here's how I do it. I get my ruler over here, and I use this as my guide. So I make sure it's flush on this side. If the cardboard's flush on this side, and the ruler is pressed up against it, this is what I need to remove. But not all three layers, just the top two layers. <laughs> Gently, then we peel it apart, making sure to get all of it so that it's completely clean, like this. And look at that. Can you see how this fits in? Fits right in there. And then, of course, this isn't going to fit just yet because we have to deal with the thickness here. That's not going to work either. So we just created a gap that's the thickness of the cardboard. If we make it too thick, then we'll have a problem with it, with it coming up too high on this edge. And if it's too short, if, if we don't peel enough here, then your edge is going to stick out like this. Bacon going vertic vertically, bacon horizontally. Can you see it in there? So that the edges look different. But I've got this edge over here, which actually I prefer. So let's see what it looks like if we use the bone folder to break this. All right, just, it's a little harder, but it still bends very nicely. Got a nice edge there. Mm. That's okay, no one's gonna see that, you tuck it in. But if you wanted to expose the edges, then cutting it is the way to go. So give it a slice. You're trying to cut through the top of the paper and through the bacon to that back, look at that. So, so <laughs> If I, want, if I want to fold this inward, I still need to go back and compress it. But if I want to show this, let me cut one more. Because depending on what you're doing, and another thing, I've got a little double-sided tape on here. And that, that keeps the ruler from sliding around. You might have to change it every once in a while. But if you find that your ruler is just spinning too much, a little double-sided tape, that one here too. So look at that, I mean, that's, that's kind of a cool look. But if we wanna fold it in, we have to go back and compress. 
So if you're not going to show off the edges, oops, the edges on the outside, you might as well use the bone folder to compress everything. And then we still have to trim this and deal with deal with everything else. Just so you can see the difference between the two <laughs> and the edges here look different. And I think this sort of edge is easier to glue. So if you've got a form with a really long edge that has to be glued, I would make sure it's got this edge. If you can, depending on how you fit it in the cardboard. But because it's just naturally stiffer, with this edge, who knows where you are? You could be on a hill, on a valley. It, it all depends on kind of where you cut. But you're always going to have a hard edge when you cut it through the bacon like that against it. And then I can cut the edge off. I know, I've done this for so long that I know the thickness of the cardboard. <laughs> but I can use this as a gauge. This is actually a little harder to peel. But I think it really helps to have the double-sided tape. Oh, well, of course, this one's peeling beautifully right now. That's good, I'm glad. <laughs> and then it's gonna fit in here. It's just gonna, this, this edge is always just gonna be a prettier edge because it's harder and it's a firm edge and it's just easier to glue. All right, my glue is ready. I can tell as I squeeze it, it's coming out. And I just keep it on a little piece of cardboard. It's actually off to the side over here. I don't want it on my cutting mat at all. So if we get glue on the cutting mat, we can even just move it. If we get glue on the cutting mat, it'll stay there forever. And you don't want that. So whatever work surface you've got. So this is the arrangement. <laughs> now I've cleaned this out. I need to get some glue in here. And I need to do it quickly before, before it hardens. So as I'm squeezing it out, the goal is to get the tip of the gun in the back, like right in this crease here, and then eventually move it out to the edge. We have to get all the edge, all the way to the edge. So I just start squeezing and I lay it in there like this. I just keep squeezing it out. And then as I squeeze it out, it's starting to cool off. So I go back and forth. The longer the seam, like the longer the, the edge here, the trickier it becomes. But the tip, that metal tip of the glue gun is hot. So just pressing it against the glue will reactivate it. So I'm at a point where I don't need to add any more glue, but I've just got to heat it up, make sure it's really nice and hot. All the way across, I just add a little more there. I'm going back to and then as quickly as I can, added a little more right there too. I want it to go right up to the edge. As quickly as I can, I've got to close it. Get it right in place, close it up, and then I slide my fingers across. It's a little warm, but if you keep your fingers moving, you should be okay. If little bits come out, little bits coming out right there, just Squeeze on past it, and it doesn't take long for this to set. I just keep passing by like that. Just little bits squeezed out, and then I just swept them away, pinched them. And then what you want is an edge like that. An edge, just like with the bristle, you want an edge that blends with every other edge, like that. This is the one. There it is. Nice and clean. This one is cut right in the hills and valleys. So it's the same process, it's just sometimes it doesn't seal quite as tightly. So I'm getting the glue on there. I think I, I got a little too much right there, so I'm just moving it into the form. 
I don't want it squeezing out on me. I'm using that tip to force that glue down here. Yeah, I just squeezed a little too much. I got a little nervous because I'm running out of glue. <laughs> I need to put a new stick in, so I got a little nervous. I squeezed a little too hard. So here it is. A little more right there. And then passing through, just using the hot tip of the tool. And then right here. And now same thing, as fast as you can. There we go, close that up. And I like to just, I'm setting it on the table on a point, which forces these edges to come together. And then I just run my fingers through, run my fingers past and pinch. And whenever you pick up some glue, just rub it off your fingers. If this feels a little too hot, you can always use a little scrap piece of cardboard like that to push against. And then I just keep squeezing it until it's cooled off. But you'll see the seam's not quite as tight because of the hill, hill and valley structure there. But still pretty good. I could always go in with a paintbrush and maybe touch it up with some white glue. That's still pretty good. So that when we roll it, doesn't really stand out. And then here, I think you can see I cut a groove all the way across so this can fit in. Like this. 